Hello again, this is Michael Golden. This is part two of the Poker Journal demo. If you haven't seen part one yet, I recommend you go watch that. This will make a whole lot more sense, and then come back and watch this one. If you've watched part one, thanks for joining me on part two, and uh, we'll just dive right in. Here it is. I'm gonna reset the filters. Takes a little longer to update because it's also updating the report. When you're done with the report, you can just close it and it goes away and now it won't uh, take any extra time to update it. So that's the cash games. We looked at the list, we looked at, oh, we didn't look at a game. So let's actually, from the list, we can go tap on a game and see the information about that game, see any notes we may have written. Uh, again, it's in green if you broke even or made money, it's in red if you uh, lost money. So we can also go edit this, um, you edit this just like you'd edit a new game. Uh, it pre-defaults all these values into the editors, and you can go change those values. Um, really quick to enter a new game, uh, really quick to uh, pretty much no matter what you want to do, it's pretty quick. We can go from page to page and scroll through the games. Now, let's go take a look at our, our live game. All right, we've been playing seven minutes, and let's say, phew, boy, we need a break. Okay, so we're going to leave the table, and now notice the break timer's running and the playtime is paused. So I'll track for you uh, within the app um, how long you've played, but how much of that is actual game time and how much of that you were away from the table. So you can keep track of actual playtime uh, for, for your numbers. Um, when you're done, you finally say end game. Uh, it'll come up and ask, let's just do it. It'll come up and say, how much did you leave with? Well, we started with 50. Let's say we left with 127, and I'll save that. And now it's calculated the profit down here. You're buying uh, cashed out. If during that time there was a, the that you were running, you could have had um, anytime you rebuy, there's a rebuy button. You just say, hey, I put another 50 bucks in, another 100 bucks, whatever it is. Um, and that'll uh, keep track of your total buy-ins. It does not keep track of how many rebuys you've done, it just adds that to your buy-in amount. All right, so that's cash games. Notice the gray one's gone because that was a live game. And that leaves us with tournaments to look at. So tournaments, same thing. Slightly different statistics because uh, we have, for instance, ITM in the money percentage um, that we wouldn't have for cash games. Um, Again, same charts. Again, same reports. Let's do a uh, location report. And it's thinking about it, and then it comes up. So here's a bunch of different locations. How many games played at each one? And the statistics, um, including in the money, uh, you know, how many games played. So a bunch of games on stars some on party poker, all the information there, you can look at it side by side and really compare your data, figure out where you do best. Again, you can export that data, um, you can change the report type, you can filter that report data, and you can, of course, close it. Again, the list looks the same here as it does for cash games. You can sort the list up or down, or down or up, and it'll, it'll uh, give you earliest to latest, or latest to earliest. Again, when you add a game, here, this version doesn't track live tournaments, so it's only after the fact that you'd enter your tournament data, um, and you'd enter your, your buy-in, how many players, how many places paid, uh, where you finished, how much money you won, any notes about that. Now, you may not have finished in the money, but you may still have won a bounty, so you can go ahead and get, uh, uh, you, can, you can, it doesn't say if there's, uh, three places paid and you finish in fifth place, it doesn't require that you put zero in for the amount won because you may still have won some money. Um, it may not uh, have covered your buy-in, but it may have defrayed some of those costs. So you can do all that stuff there. Again, you can edit these things later. Um, well, here, don't discard. So let's just, you know, the, the process of putting in a new game um, is you've got different date pickers, you can whichever way you like to put it in. And if you're entering a lot of old data, it'll keep track of your last entry date. So if you're entering a bunch of old data chronologically, you enter one game, you come back, you say last entry date, it'll restore back to where it was 
last entry date. So if you've got lots of online games that you want to fill in, um, you can you can do that. You can either save here, um, or you can uh, fill out the date, say save and next, and continue to enter your data. So here you can enter your limits, um, no limit, and again it defaults to that, but maybe we're playing no limit Raz. Hmm. Now let's say we're playing a, a game we don't have in here. Um, do I? I don't have Badugi in here. So let's say there's uh, there's no Badugi. Well, you don't have to go back to set up and create the new game. What you can do is go down here to New, and it pops up the uh, new entry, so you can get, add games on the fly. A D U. I think that's how you spell it. Anyway, that's how I'll spell it. Adds a new game on the fly. It's now created. Um, we saved it and boom, we save. Um, again, from the game, we could have hit save and next and say it's a sit and go. Um, this was uh, Jimmy's game. And anyway, you get the idea. So, and then go ahead and save that and you save the tournament. Um, the filters are a little different for tournaments than they are for cash games because we keep track of a little bit different data. Lastly, I'll tell you about the overview. The overview uh, combines cash games and tournaments. Now, we can either tap that little eye guy or we can uh, swipe across and we can do, um, oh, let's do a date chart and done. And what this is doing is combining both cash games and tournaments into a chart. Now, I have a whole lot of data in for cash games in 2009 that I don't have in the others. So we could filter it to 2009 just by double tapping on that year. And now here's the 2009 chart. Let's actually do it with overlays. See how this shows up. Well, we don't have any tournaments in 2009, only cash games. So it doesn't show up too uh, interestingly but let's go back to filters and say reset the filters it's now recounting all the games and what you'll see is the cash uh, cash games are in red shown the tournaments are in green shown don't be confused green and red in this case don't mean profitable and non-profitable um, above zero means profitable below zero means non-profitable uh, I perhaps should change those colors, which I will consider in the future. Um, all right, well, and then finally there's the About box, uh, the About button, I should say, the About tab, which gives you some release notes and information about this application. Um, you can see the splash screen, which was donated to me by a guy named Patrick Melton, who uh, I think down in here, and there's a way to contact him if you like his artwork. It's really nice stuff. So there are links to the online website um, where you can uh, read some uh, frequently asked questions, read some docs, and of course you can email me by tapping the email button. All right, that's Poker Journal. Uh, I will do some more in-depth tutorials about the different parts of it, but that's the gist of it, and I hope that helps. Uh, helps you decide that this is an application that is going to make you more money as a poker player. Uh, it gives you the tools you need to look at your data and figure out where it is uh, perhaps the holes in your game are and where it is you are profitable and should spend uh, even more time time going there. So, all right, thanks so much for uh, watching this and it's available up on the App Store, Poker Journal by Michael Golden. There, I'll leave you with, there you go, there's a splash, Oop. splash screen. All right, thanks so much.